Today we'll talk about the frame. If we want to build a full cubic meter printer, we must size it so that movement can be granted for one meter across all three axes. To achieve this, we must design each beam, taking into account the size of what is moving on the beam, how much of the beam will be inserted into supports and, of course, the, the movement we want to make one meter. Many people like to build the frame and the subframe structures where one keeps everything together and the other one holds the motors and all the moving parts. We don't want to go this way since this would add much complexity to the structure and thus increasing the overall cost of the machine. Uh, we want to spend as less as we can while keeping quality as high as possible. Uh, to keep it simple about this, uh, I'll use my own printer as a real-world example. First things first, dimensions. We must know the minimum length on each axis which must be available for our moving parts. To do so, we just need to know or speculate the size of what will move on each axis. Let's make an example with the X. We start with it because we must start from the moving part nearest to the extruders and go forth to the farthest one. So the order, in this case, will be X, Y, Z. We need to move it one meter, so we add some centimeters just to be safe. Then we add the size of the carriage holding the extruders, which we estimate being 10 centimeters wide. We will design it later, for now we just imagine a huge box. Then we add the spacing between both extruders, which in the worst case scenario will be the same size of the carriage. Finally, we add some length that will go straight inside the Y carriages, 3 cm per side will be ok. Now this is the length of the X beam, not the X frame sides, which will be slightly larger. That's because of the Y carriages, those that hold the wall X beam and roll over the Y movement. Let's say that we need a centimeter on each side and that's how long the frame will be on the X length. Now, let's see the Y axis. For the minimum length on the Y movement, we first keep in mind that we'll be rolling straight on the frame, so this time we will be calculating the Y length of the frame itself. So, as we did for the X axis, we'll need a meter long movement. We'll add 10 cm to be safe. Then we will add the projected length of the carriage, which, as before, we estimate by excess, let's say 15 cm, and the extruders on the y-axis will just approximate by excess. And, as we did before, we add some spacing at both ends, just in case our belt tensioners come out too big, 5 cm will be ok. We'll see the Z-axis next time, when we will we'll talk about movement in part 2 of this video. Now, some working examples. As I foretold in this video, the costly linear rails guarantee smooth motion over one axis, while avoiding unnecessary rotor translation. We can achieve the same result by binding or moving parts to their beams with some ball bearings, as I did. We can even have some degrees of freedom or not so perfect carriages as long as the whole carriage is stable enough. Finally, I would like to give my thanks to Bruno M from New York who suggested on the Italian version of this video to use uh, skateboard wheels instead of bearings for the carriage, thus improving their movement. If possible, we will make this improvement and uh, show you how we did it in a later video on this series. Till next time, see you soon, see you next video, uh, ciao!